Hello my DC movie peeps, the Blue Beetle trailer has finally landed online after much anticipation, at least on my part. This is a character I was first introduced to back when I was watching Brave and the Bold as a kid. Some were introduced to Jaime Reyes' version of Blue Beetle through the Injustice video game, or maybe even through the Young Justice animated series. Whatever the case may be, this is a DC character that is fairly new, but has grown in popularity a lot over the past several years. And so what I'm going to be doing here for you guys is not only going to give you my trailer, trailer breakdown point easter eggs you might have missed here trying to piece together where this fits in the new rebooted universe or if this is gonna stay in the old universe i'm also gonna try and educate you on the blue beetle character also on the movie itself because i've already seen some comments oh cgi looks a little mid oh this, something doesn't look right this movie remember was initially made to go straight to streaming when the cameras were rolling and they were writing this thing and all that they knew it was gonna be a straight to streaming movie but then that changed and now it's going theatrical we'll get into all that here but i want to hear your guys opinions you see this blue beetle trailer are you willing to give it a chance does having a little bit of uncertainty for the future of the dc universe make you uninterested to see this movie i feel like that's what happened with shazam fear of the gods some people didn't know what was happening so they didn't even go see a nice charming fun family movie all right so jumping into it here just kind of giving you a history on the making of this movie so this film was conceived when the old regime before james gunn took over and instead when Walter Hermata was in charge, him and the creative team at Warner Bros. at the time thought it'd be a smart idea to spend millions of dollars on superhero movies that would only go to streaming. Batgirl was going to be one of those movies that was completely shot and finished, but then was scrapped for tax purposes and also because it doesn't fit into their new continuity universe. We were literally weeks away from them starting to film a Wonder Twins movie with the kid from Riverdale, but the Blue Beetle movie was one that slipped through the cracks, was getting made, all with the intention to go straight on HBO Max. And I'm not going to say that's a complete excuse for it to be maybe kind of like an average or just okay movie, but streaming films nowadays are the new equivalent to straight to DVD movies. Movies where the budget is lower, sometimes it gives off the vibe of a made for TV movie. So I can completely understand some of the criticisms of people who saying they already kind of see those vibes in here. Even a couple of shots in the trailer, like when they're in Court Industries, feel like shots that were ripped out of the the We Can Be Heroes movie off Netflix, just with the exaggerated colors. And also, you got to remember, this movie is releasing in August, and with superhero movies nowadays, they work on the visual effects until like a week or two before that movie hits theaters. So, a lot of the stuff we are seeing are unfinished visual effects. But putting that out of the way, let's get to talking about what we got here with Blue Beetle. So, the trailer starts off with our lead actor, Solo Maridueña, portraying the third Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes. In the comics, there were two other Blue Beetles that we actually do get Easter eggs and hints to even their costumes. The first Blue Beetle was Dan Garrett, whose costume we see in this little lab inside Cord Industries. Now, in the comics, they've switched up Dan Garrett's backstory a couple of times. He first started off as a cop that came in contact with the Scarab, and it gave him a rather dated-looking costume and a basic set of powers, flight, superhuman strength, the ability to shoot some projectiles. But then over time, they changed him to be a professional who then was mentoring Ted Kord, the second Blue Beetle that is just as popular and cool as Jaime Reyes. And I say that because Ted Kord, whose costume is also in that little secret laboratory right here, not just his costume, but his big old Beetle ship that we actually get a look at in the movie. I can't believe they put that in there. His version of the Blue Beetle actually never got any powers from the Scarab. He's kind of like a high-tech Batman, which is why we get a line like this in the trailer. It's like Batman stuff. Ted Kord is supposed to be a brilliant scientist scientist who mine rivals that of Batman. Some people would even argue he's smarter than Batman. But for different reasons in the comics, either Cord not wanting the Scarab to be attached to his body or the Scarab not choosing him as a host, instead Ted Cord would just analyze the Scarab, use its energy, and have that advance our modern day technology enough to where he built his own company, Cord Industries. Which we also get several shots of in the trailer, looking like it'll play a big part into this film. But jumping now into the third Blue
Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes, the trailer starts off with his ambitions to be a rich, powerful man, only to face the reality that he's way far from that. Now, in the comics, Jaime Reyes is usually portrayed as a high school student. For this movie, he will be just entering college. It's said that he spent one year in college away from home, and now he's back for the summer visiting his family. One big change that they're making from the comics into the movie here, you can see this plane going by saying, I love Palomera City. This looks to be a new fictional town for DC, similar to like Gotham City, Metropolis, Central City. But in the comics, this version of Blue Beetle is usually from El Paso, Texas. And you know what? That's not a change I mind. I've always liked that DC has these fake cities. I don't like feeling like they can go to New York or LA. I like thinking that Metropolis is their New York, you know? Gotham City is their Detroit. No offense to my Detroit people. You guys get cool Batman over there. But you know what I mean. So I feel like this kind of goes with DC. I'm also loving the colors in the trailer, the blues and violets, here especially with Jaime and his sister looking out into the city. This is also another change in the comics. Usually in the comics, Jaime's sister is much younger, but here they look to be like maybe one or two years apart. From here, it looks like Jaime Reyes is about to get ready for an interview in Cord Industries, probably for an internship or just to start off his college boy career in somewhere big. Love that they also have his Hispanic family in the back cheering him on, his mother and father, the abuela and the uncle played by George Lopez along with his sister Milagros. From there, it looks like a friend of the family, Jenny, will be stealing the infamous scarab that kind of gave Cord all its technology and resources and hands it off to Jaime to keep him safe. Also, kind of a change from the comic. In the comics, Jaime was just walking with his friend Brenda and Paco, who don't seem to be part of this movie, but are kind of important relationships in the comics for him, but that's neither here or there. And then him just stumbling upon the scarab on the street. With newer characters like Jaime and Blue Beetle, I really don't mind that the studios take that liberty to have their origins kind of reworked to fit with the movie. They're not really like a Spider-Man or a Batman origin where it's so set, you know, Uncle Ben needs to die, your two parents need to die walking out of a theater. And Marvel's also guilty of origin changing a lot with their most recent new heroes. But this sequence that we get here of the Scarab analyzing Jaime and then choosing him to be the host and how it plays out in an almost body horror kind of way, I think was so smart. Because like, yes, it's played up for laughs for a little bit, having George Lopez with a mullet trying to just shake it off his nephew, but then seeing him get shot up to the ceiling, it almost looking like it's burning his flesh and clothes, revealing his suit for the very first time, which I gotta say, I love this suit easily probably one of the top three DC suits ever. We've already seen from set photos that they actually built a practical suit and they're just gonna layer on CGI for added touches like for the light or like the scarab on the back igniting the thrust. I really love it and even in the Blue Beetle comic there are panels where they describe the transformation of him going in and out of Blue Beetle form is supposed to look horrific. There's one panel where his friend witnesses it in person and he feels like he's about to throw up watching it. But then here's where we get to one major change that I do have to agree with some fans I don't absolutely love. The Scarab itself is supposed to be self-aware and have a mind of its own. In fact, it'll control Jaime from time to time. But in the comics, the Scarab has its own language. It is alien-based tech. Although it started off in the comics as a Scarab found in ancient Egypt and they thought it had maybe magical abilities. Later on, through retcons and retells of the story, it was revealed that it's actually alien technology from a group called The Reach, where it was part of their world domination plan where they send this biological weapon to earth to take over for them and in the process they have supposedly taken over thousands of different planets but back to the voice that they gave it here it speaks english it sounds robotic when we live in a world where there's already so many iron man like copycats wanting to have their own jarvis and this pov through their tech and whatnot i thought blue beetle could stand out by giving it those kind of alien r2d2 beep boop sounds where jaime completely understands what it's saying to it, but us the audience has to kind of take that in through context clues or him just reiterating what it said. A lot like with Rocket and Groot or Han Solo and Chewbacca. Still, not a deal breaker for me. It makes sense why they did it. Such high advanced tech, you're telling me it can't learn the language of the planet it falls on? Yeah. Here's then where the trailer just goes into showing just a few of the abilities this Blue Beetle will have shooting up into the sky, giving us an absolutely breathtaking shot of the landscape. I like the CGI here. I know some shots aren't perfect, but I think the CGI is still good looking. We get a great shot of his Blue Beetle wings coming out. I actually think this is a kind of cool moment wherever he gets an energy shield and they're talking about the whole point of the Scarab is to protect its host. So it'll do things without the consent of the host, which is 
is a big problem in the comics with Jaime. He's constantly battling with the Scarab for control of his own body. But admittedly, this was kind of funny to me, the way the Blue Beetle's just looking around and the people are just kind of confused at what's going on. Even his hand going up and covering himself like, oh, what am I doing? That's kind of funny to me. Also got to say, from what I'm seeing right now, I'm also glad they didn't give him the Injustice 2 mouth moving. That looks kind of creepy to me. I like that he can just talk without having that weird lip and mouth situation go on. From there, though, it finally gives us a shot to one of the main villains of the movie, Victoria Court. Now, Victoria Court actually isn't a character from the comics, but that last name is very important. I mentioned earlier the second Blue Beetle, Ted Cord, who used the Scarab and the energy it was giving off to build all his tech and company, it appears now that his sister, maybe even wife, we're not exactly sure the relation to Ted Cord, is wanting this Scarab back for its powers and to keep growing Cord Industries. I think this will be a big part of the movie, kind of a mystery to where Ted Cord is. I really hope he's not dead. I would love him to be out there somewhere. A great fan theory I have about this in the comics, Ted Cord likes to team up with another superhero known as Booster Gold, someone that is confirmed to get his own series in the new James Gunn DC universe, and that's a superhero from the future that uses time travel to go back in time and uses his future tech to look like a superhero when he's a wannabe. But in the comics, they pair up together a lot. It's a good dynamic between them. I'm thinking maybe Booster Gold accidentally sent Ted Cord to another place in time. They're off doing missions, and that's why he's disappeared in our present day. That's a theory but we'll find out. I just hope he's not dead. I'm also loving the family aspect that they're playing into here in the comics. It takes a bit of a while, but Jaime does reveal his identity to his family. He doesn't hide it from him, which is something that makes him different from other younger superheroes that try to hide their identity from their loved ones. And I feel like this is going to be a very powerful part of the movie. I mean, at one point, you even see Jaime's dad laying down as if he got hurt protecting his family. Another sneak peek shot at a secondary villain that we're going to get in here is car packs. In the comics, the origin for Conrad Carspack is was a guy was investigating a laboratory when he came across this robot and then through it going haywire when he touched it, his physical body died, but his subconscious mind then transferred into the actual robot, which he controlled with all sorts of gadgets and doohickeys to fight. I'm not sure if that's the origin they're going to go with here. It could just be a man within a suit using core tech as sort of like a mercenary for hire, but it'll still be kind of cool to see Blue Beetle fight a big tech out robot and how his alien tech goes up against our modern tech. Now the other part of the trailer I love that had me just with a big dumb smile on my face is when the suit was telling Jaime that whatever you imagine I can pretty much create for you. Giving it almost kind of like a Green Lantern vibe as long as he can will it he can make it. Where he comes out with a sword that looks straight out of Final Fantasy 7. But those aren't the only weapons he conjures up. We see here he turns his two fists into balls with spikes. At one point turning one of his hands into a giant giant hammer that sends out a shockwave. I'm just hoping that at some point in this movie they have him form a two-arm blaster because that always looks cool to me. So honestly, yeah, I'm hyped for Blue Beetle. I hope people give this movie a chance. I'm not expecting this to be like mind-blowing comic book moviness, but the light-hearted fun tone, the infectious feeling of being young and having these superpowers and getting to do all this. Also for me personally, the Hispanic angle in here, I just love to see it on the big screen. So yeah, I'm down for this movie. I hope they pull it off and that this character can continue on in James Gunn's new DC rebooted universe. But I need to hear from you guys. You see the Blue Beetle trailer. What can you pick out? What do you think will be going down? What you like, what you don't like? Would love to hear it all down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.